Hello, we're doing another video on the uh, AFC East. Hey, welcome we're, back. We're on the uh, New England Patriots. Um, Sean, let's talk about um, Brady first of all. How, how does the four-game suspension affect him? Uh, well, it's it's massive. I mean, obviously Brady's uh, QB one, you know, in most people's books, and he'll come bouncing back. His first games against Cleveland, Week Five, he's he's going to be fantasy relevant for the, all the season he plays. The problem is, of course. He's not going to be um, a QB1 in terms of fantasy. You know, unfortunately, he's going to fall outside of that list. And if you take him, you've got to take a second quarterback. He's now, still been drafted as a, as a... I think he's too high in ADP list. So currently, what is he sitting at? 80, 88? 88, 88, 88, 88, yeah. Yeah, that's too high on my list. I mean, that means you're coming in, you know, in a large league round, round five and in other leagues, what, inside the top 10 rounds. I mean, that just seems crazy. That it's too high. Um, I'd much rather see his ADP a little bit lower down. It's a bit like looking at Levon Bell. You know, you've got to be very cautious for any player that's missing four weeks because your fantasy season can be riding on those first few weeks so much. It's the Cinderella moment. You want to get it just right. And if you haven't got produ- production from any position or very limited production, it can affect the entire fantasy season whether they come back or not. And do you think it affects the players around him like the uh, Dion Lewis's, the Julian Edelman's? I think it massively does. He's a leader. Uh, any player that is the quarterback is always traditionally the leader of the team, the offense. Um, he will set the tempo of the squad. You know how he jokes around in the huddle or keeps everybody calm under pressure. Well, like say, leader, can yeah. can take uh, can make everybody look good. And a good quarterback can make even the most average fantasy player look relevant he every made single the week. Look good. Well, he has done. You know, <laughs> uh, he has done. Um, but we'll talk about the the good, the bad, and the busts really. So, where would you like to start? Okay, so well, let's start with Julian Edelman then. Um, what have you got him down as for Edelman? What are your thoughts on him? Mm, with the injury issues and and the Brady suspension touching him, right? Okay, so I agree with you. I think I think Edelman. The the issue is four games without Brady coming back from injury again. Another another red flag because the more injuries you have, the more red flags you you gather. Um, we know he's a great player. We know he can produce when he's healthy. But you're not going to have Brady throwing to you for four weeks. If it was PPR, so, I might be interested in Edelman because he, he does put he, up some really good That's weeks, a f- very valid point. Yeah. Um, obviously, you've got Hogan injured. He's just injured his shoulder. Well, Amandola I liked, injured. I, I liked Hogan as a sleeper, but that was before this injured, shoulder injury yeah. news. Now it's kind of... I'm kind of... I'm going to be drafting in some leagues and I'm not really, unfortunately, up for pre-season. Pre- after pre-season drafts, before I, I go anywhere near him, and by that stage, it may be too late. You just want to know the extent of that injury, yeah. really. Amandola's still injured. I'm always worried about uh, Amandola and I think the other chapter, Mick, Mixon, is Dobson. And the two of those together, every time they have one good fantasy week and five or six really poor ones, I, I can't go anywhere near these guys. So say 10, 10 or 15. I can't go anywhere near these guys. You've also guys. got Keith. John Martin and Nate, oh, Wa- Nate Washington. They were talking about Keyshawn Martin last year. You know, people were talking He's about had injury issues and, as well. And I, I can't go anywhere near these guys. So for me, the whole group of them are kind of a like. It's surprising to say New England, these are all busts. And that, fans, this is the wide receivers. I mean, if we talk about the running backs, yeah. Lewis and Blunt and, and White and maybe Brandon Bolden even, you don't know which one's going to produce any week. Well, everybody's hoping that Lewis comes back from the injury he has um, and, and is able to produce at the level that he was before. But I always hate that kind of thought process because the problem is we know he missed half a year. I remember years where I've seen Stephen Jackson on pace you know, for 2,000 yards. A few years, and he's missed them with injuries as you well. You know, so I, I, I'm very much I'm wary of those kind of players. And every single one of them, even Blunt, I mean, yeah, he can pl- pl- punch in a touchdown... But he'll give you 20 or 30 yards only and a touchdown. And that's lovely, nine fantasy points. But that might be the only time he does it in three weeks. Yeah. So I, I can't go anywhere near... And I don't even think Bill Belichick goes anywhere near these fantasy Well, players. that's the thing. If you if you draft LeGarrette Blunt, you don't know whether to play him or not. You've got that quandary. You don't know whether it's going to be the touch that week or... No, I, I, that's why I never pick him. Or he sat you know, on the bench, I, not twiddling his thumbs. I, I think this has been always been the issue. I mean, I feel you know I respect people who have been who are brave to pick up players last year when he came through. I mean, massively respect that. I, I was always a little bit put off. I had a little go at him a couple of leagues. I put a bid in, but he was on the waiver waiver wire, Lewis. So he's yeah. worth a pick up. Worth right? a pick I mean, up. You, yeah. you, I mean, literally, you could get rid of your last pick, pick Lewis, and hope up, that it, it panned out. Which and, it, and Brady which it was talking. You know, he was he was saying good things about him. So they were. They were you know, it's it's a difficult one to assess is because when you look at the good, it's obviously Brady, but obviously he's not going to be playing 
is going to be suspended for weeks. When you look at the bad, there's an awful lot of bad. Yeah, there's a lot you know, when you look at the sl- lot of injuries, a lot of injuries. When you look at the sleepers, it's difficult to pick out. So what you're dealing with here is a team that I'm avoiding again. This is another team I'm. I'm pretty much staying well clear of England. Well, let's just talk about the tight end because obviously they've got the best one in the league in in Grant. That's that's a very. Fair but they've point. also got Metellus Bennett as well now. Yeah. Now, a few people have been big on Bennett because of the two tight ends that yeah. you know used to have with Hernandez. You're not. Okay, no. no, I'm not. I mean, Gronkowski obviously is the you know he's a weapon. He's not really what you call um, high end. You know, I mean, no. you see Gronk slip off the line and go out, and that's what he does best. And he dominates anybody. I mean, he he's can so be unplayable, big. Gronk. Though. He's unplayable when he's out in the field. I mean, you know, any time he can get the ball in his hands, you know, and that's what New England do. They dink and dunk the ball down the field beautifully. Uh, Brady, it's really tiny, hard to stop. As well. You know, really difficult to stop it because they can throw a ball. You know, he's, he's, what's his average? Right. I mean, it's ridiculous what he does, isn't it? It's unstoppable when you can pound the ball for a yard, get the first down and keep moving the chains. I mean, but Gronk is that unique weapon where once he's in a game, you always feel he's going to score a touchdown. When he's in the game, it, it's a, he's a nightmare. But he's going ADP 10. Is that somewhere, and somewhere you he's like? not. No, you already know my thoughts on this. Draft him inside the first round of any league size because I don't think the value's there. I'm looking for a 200-point player, and I'm sorry, Gronk isn't it. Second round, absolutely every time. Um, but when we talk about Bennett, we've got to look at another issue, which is this is not Hernandez. Um, Bennett's a different type of player entirely. Do I trust Bennett to block Brady's kind of blind side? Yeah, brilliant block. And I think that's what Bilicek sees in him. He sees a player that could be used in two tight end sets. You see him more of a blocker than I see him more as a blocker. Sets, and... Yeah, I do. And I think it's logical because as soon as you move the blocker out to also go out into the field like Gronk, which is which sounds brilliant, and that's what every fantasy guy is telling me. Oh, wouldn't it be lovely? But it would be lovely until the coordinators adjust about a week later and then say, hmm, if Metellus Bennett moves off the line ahead of you, ignore him, charge the quarterback, give me a, give me a sack. And Brady, you, Brady ain't going to like that. Particular. Brady ain't going to like people who are getting in in his face and disrupting their time. They they work on getting the ball out quickly. Now it's. You know, it's very difficult to, to, to stop someone who can throw the ball in two, two and a half seconds on an average. Yes, that's true, but not if they're coming off the tight end spot. Two and a half seconds from there to move nine yards is very doable. Yeah, These big guys can rumble, and if they've got a gap to the quarterback, they can take off and straight at the quarterback, then they will unload this. So I wouldn't read into it that Matelis Bennett's going to be some amazing Hernandez figure. I'm sure there'll be games, but like we always say in fantasy, can you judge which ones Tell us when it's okay, so relevant. basically we're saying don't draft any patients. I'm <laughs> avoiding them. Yeah. Okay, thanks very much, Sean.